Yeah. Okay. So you up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the stand is awake. But when you finally go to bed, you know what time it is? Okay. Was the TV on? Okay. The room was black or dark. Yeah, like dark. You wake up, he's raping you. Hands are on your neck. He likes that. He likes it because he can hold me here. Okay. Okay. And he can push me down and he can get further up. <laughs> so he pushes down the wall right here. He pushes down like this. Okay. So he does. Both hands usually? No, the other one's always up on top so he can pinch right here. And why does he pinch here? He pinches here and it, it makes it so I can't swallow and then I, I get really, I go really dizzy really fast when he pushes it here. When I can't swallow, I can't make noise either. And I can't bite. <laughs> So tell me what happens. Does he ejaculate? No, he drinks a little bit on the bed and the rest of it he was holding in his hand. And I was crying. Thank <laughs> you. 
really didn't. <laughs> okay, he <laughs> didn't hurt me. <laughs> okay. What did you yell before? Because you said you yelled something. Do you remember what you yelled? Thank <laughs> you. 
he just, so he, he had no, if anything, he, he took the hammer away. So if we find fingerprints and we, you know, the blood that we found on him would be... Because he pulled me away from... Okay. You don't remember what? I didn't make, I don't remember making the mental decision to do that. I just, it's not like I walked down the bathroom and said, I'm going to hit him with a hammer. I didn't.
right? That's well outside of our, our grasp. Um, we will document what you said, just how you're, you've explained the abuse to the tech Tory. We document all that. That's her purpose of spending. I know it may not seem like it now, but the whole purpose of spending five hours in here just unbelievably detailing every single thing you would tell us about the abuse. That's part of the reason we do that. All right, so you'll go down to Fourth Avenue Jail tonight. You'll see a judge usually in the first 12 to 15 hours. It depends on how busy they are. So probably sometime early morning, maybe by 8 or 9 o'clock. You'll have what they call your initial appearance. And all the initial appearance is to look at the charge and the judge will determine if you're a flight risk and to set bond if you can release you on your own recognizance. He's going to set a bond as far as where you actually have to pay money to get out of a security bond that you'll promise to appear later. And it will also determine if you need counsel. Counsel on this will be an attorney. Uh, it'll give you the option of hiring your own attorney, or if you want to have one appointed to you, that's the time that they'll actually appoint you an attorney as well. So the charges go through before they look in the case? The initial charge goes through. The county attorney's office actually came up to the scene with us, walked through the scene earlier today. When we keep them on the phone, we keep them updated on everything that goes through. The county attorney's office will get the case tomorrow and we'll look at everything. But the charge tonight to actually start the process, that's what the charge is. And that's what I'm saying. Things can change. It can change to an aggravated assault. It can change to a regular assault. There's so many different variables that can happen. I don't want to tell you one thing that haven't changed. So initially, that's what it goes down as. And then as it goes through the court process, and the attorneys get involved. There's all kinds of complications that can happen. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Did I lose any part or anything you want me to make sure I clarify? I understand just with the whole situation is a lot to take up there and take it. You know. Explain everything with your your mom and the kids tonight, correct? Yeah. Okay. Was that your mom that you were talking to? Do you want to kind of explain her what's going on? Would you rather us explain it to her? We'll give you a few minutes to call her. So she kind of knows the process, and she's got my phone number, and uh, I'm sure she probably did call me if she had any questions. Because with you, with her being down here and being with the cell phone, if you're going to try to get calling from jail, you're not going to be able to get hold of her because you need to call collect. You can't call collect on a cell phone. So... Previously, with what what we've seen at the scene, 
I don't know that it would have changed anything. Yeah. Now, granted, it's taken us a long time. We're not going to be done with the house, but probably tomorrow night. We're actually coming back in the morning and starting at 8 o'clock with the house. There was so much for us with the house. Whether you told us what you told us or not, I don't believe it's going to change anything in the long run as far as what happens tonight. Realistically, in my mind, I believe that there are circumstances and details of this case that definitely change the situation from somebody just going up and doing what happened to somebody out of the pool. Self-defense can, you know, if I say mitigating, do you understand what that means? The self-defense statute can be a mitigating statute where you may not get completely off, but it can significantly reduce the end result. Does that make sense? So it may be charged the same because of some factors that can be considered through self-defense where somebody who just cold-blooded, complete stranger, didn't know anybody, or didn't know this person committed the same crime and had a history of crimes in the past, which you don't, you know, they could be looking at a lot of time in prison where a domestic issue that's been brewing for years and years and years. I can't even tell you what the possible situations are, but there are different circumstances that are considered in all of that. And that's why it's kind of a lengthy process. There's actually uh, more or less a board or a committee review board at the county attorney's office that will look at all that and make the final charging decision. But they're aware that we're proceeding the way we are, and basically by us poking it, that's what starts the, the process there. So basically, I need to kill him. Sometimes the media picks things that we're like, are you kidding us? That's what you're going to do? Where in other cases, 
never get the news at all. So that's, I guess my answer is completely out of our hands. We have no control. And I realize there's, there's no good way for me to sit here and try to explain this stuff, but at the same point, I'm, I don't want you to, to go on from here. Do you they're, they're involved. They're already county trying to sign the case. Um, he probably won't be at the initial appearance, but he'll be forwarding the information that comes up from the initial appearance. Um, we will start forwarding our reports as soon as we get them done to the county attorney's office. Um, I would say we've got at least all day tomorrow, maybe a little bit longer still in the house. So obviously some of the reports are going to take us a while to get everything documented and set up. Do you have any other family other than your mom? Brothers or sisters? Where does she live at? What does she do? Is she married? Yeah. What does she do? She goes to school. Have a husband? He graduated with her at Texas. Is he working? Are they doing pretty good? Yeah. She's good She's to have her in mind. She's just having the first baby. Mm -hmm. Do you have a pretty good relationship with her?
and like I told you more so. What I put in my report is everything that you and I talked about. There was not going to be any surprises. And that's why I have such a good time. And it is so true. So I just Give her a call, get that over. We'll be right back. I'll give it to you guys for one hour. 